السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke the truth. He was sent to us by Allah to deliver the goodness that Allah had revealed to him. To this day, anything he said, if we were to study it in order to be able to practice and preach, we would be elevating our own status. So I want to go through a powerful narration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. That is a hadith of Abu Malik radiyallahu an, which appears in Sahih Muslim. And you know when we say Sahih Muslim, they say uh, it is obviously, we know, it is a book of hadith that is authentic. So when I say this hadith was narrated by Muslim, you know what I'm referring to, right? I'm referring to the fact that it is in a book that was compiled by an imam known as Imam Muslim. Muslim ibn Hajjaj al-Qushayri. He has a, a, a nice long name. Now, sometimes some people lie. They say anything and everything. And they say it was narrated by Muslim, meaning one Muslim fellow down the road, you know. That is not what we talk about. When we say narrated by Muslim, it doesn't mean one Muslim fellow narrated this. No, it means Imam Muslim in a certain book and it's authentic. So let's go to this hadith. It starts off by speaking about cleanliness. The hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, At-tuhuru shatrul imani Which means, cleanliness is half of your faith. It is a large portion of your faith. Now, Stop for a moment. If I were to tell you cleanliness is half of your faith. Today with the coronavirus, they are asking you to be clean. Wash your hands and so on. We wash our hands so many times a day, right? We wash our faces, our feet and so much more. They're telling us now. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. People might think for a moment that when we speak of tuhur, it is only referring to physical cleanliness. We say physical cleanliness is a portion of it. But that's not the only thing that refers to cleanliness or that cleanliness is referring to. If I say, brother, clean your thoughts. Does that mean you take your brain and put it under water? Subhanallah. Does it mean that you're actually going to drink a bit of soap and shake your heads? No, not at all. It means your mind needs to be clean. If I were to say clean up your act, your act meaning your movements, your physical, whatever you're doing, anything, clean it up. Don't misbehave, clean up your act. If it is in business, we are supposed to have clean deals. Do a clean deal. Don't cheat people and deceive. So there's cleanliness in every single aspect of life. When it comes to our dress code, we've got to dress in a beautiful way that depicts the morality and the values that we stand for. Then you've cleaned your act. Subhanallah. You cleaned your dress code. Your mind is clean. Your, you know, when a person thinks, they use the term dirty. When a person thinks dirty, we will tell them straight away, you have a dirty mind. What do they need to do? Clean it. The hadith says, you're a Muslim. Well, I tell you what, uh, cleaning your faith, meaning cleaning yourself, is actually half of your faith. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is why when the Prophet ﷺ says something, every aspect of its meaning is True to the full extent, subhanallah, cleanliness to clean your mind, clean your eyes by not looking at that which is going to disturb you. Clean your eyes by not looking at that which is immoral, that which is going to displease Allah. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنْ Beautiful verses of the Qur'an. On one hand, Allah says, tell the believing males to lower their gazes. When it comes to something you're not supposed to be looking at, 
Look down. Allah says, relax. Look down. Because your eyes connected to your mind and your heart. You don't want to contaminate your heart. So what you do, look down so that your mind is clean, your heart is clean, your system is clean, your lusts and desires are under control. Because when you see something, you know what? The hadith says, it is like the arrows of the devil. And if you, that spear is going to be released, you're going to want to follow that animal. Anyone here been out hunting? I'm sure being in South Africa here, many people have been out hunting. You see that animal and you see it close. What do you do? You pursue it until you nail it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That is permissible when it comes to hunting. But when it comes to certain things, you cannot have everything you want. You cannot have everything you see. It's not yours. Allah has not kept you on a level that you can have everything. You might afford to buy a car and someone else cannot afford to buy a car. And maybe you cannot afford to buy a certain level of a car. So you need to know the level Allah kept you at. Be happy. Thank Allah. Life is very, very short. So short, we know this world is in existence for millions of years. The exact number, I don't know. But I know millions of years. Man is so insignificant that he can only be here for an average of 60 to 70 years. That's how insignificant man is. Do you want to know who lives longer than you? Or let me word it more correctly. What lives longer than you? The tree in your yard is probably there for hundreds of years. It saw your great grandfather, your grandfather, your father, you, your child, your grandchild. And it will also see your great grandchild. That's the tree. I'm not encouraging you to go there and chop it off today. No. But my brothers and sisters, the point I'm raising is look at how insignificant we are. Man thinks he's a big deal. Man, you're only going to be here for 60 to 70 years. Then you have to prepare to go back to Allah. Subhanallah, may Allah make it easy for us. Many people leave early. They leave very early. Some people have a bonus. They live beyond 70. That is literally the gift of Allah. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you to prepare for the meeting with him. Which is going to be by far the best day ever for a believer. The day that he's going to meet with Allah. That's the best day ever. You said your shahada. Yes. You sought forgiveness of Allah. Yes. You tried to obey Allah. Yes. You tried to stay away from prohibitions. Yes. You sought the forgiveness of Allah constantly. Yes. Then you have every reason to smile because you were just a human being who was a believer in Allah. He is going to be happy to see you. Man ahabba liqa Allahi. Whoever loves the meeting with Allah, Allah loves to meet that person too. You're looking forward to meeting with Allah. I swear by Allah, Allah is looking forward to meeting with you according to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. So, Your cleanliness of every aspect, every sphere is half of your faith. Your faith. You also clean your acts of worship by doing what? Making sure you don't worship things or people or whatever else besides Allah. Because to enter into the faith, we say, La ma'buda bihaqqin illallah, la ilaha illallah. You want to become a Muslim, they say, Did you declare your shahada? What's a shahada? Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. I bear witness that. What's the translation of it? That there is none worthy of worship. Think of that statement. What did you just say? There is no one, nothing worthy of worship. Which means, I'm not going to worship anyone or anything besides Allah. That's the statement. Shaitan makes you forget that very fast. We start worshipping things. We start worshipping people. We start worshipping sticks and stones. No, don't lose that. Clean your act. At-tuhuru shatrul iman. Clean your acts of worship. They should be only and solely for Allah. Simply because there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Subhanallah. And in, the, in that way it continues. That hadith within it. There is something mentioned that is extremely interesting. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us the remembrance of Allah. And in the remembrance of Allah, there is benefit for us. When you say, Alhamdulillahi, Alhamdulillahi. When you say, Subhanallahi, what does it mean? It means, all praise is due to Allah. That is Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. 
I was bitten by a wasp a few days ago. The first thing I did, and it was on this baby finger here. You might see a mark if you're close by. The first thing I said was Alhamdulillah. Why? It could have been anywhere else. Imagine if it was my eye, my lip, my mouth, my face. Everything was swollen for two, three days. Yeah, by my, by my finger. And I'm saying Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah that I was given an instruction and teaching by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to thank Allah upon all conditions. Do you know on the day of judgment, a caller is going to call. Aynan kanu yahmadun Allah sarra'i wa darra. Where are those who used to praise Allah during times of ease and during times of hardship? Something hard happened, thank Allah, it could have been worse. Something good happened, thank Allah, it is only from Him. La ilaha illallah. You're a believer. You're different from others. You believe in Allah. Nothing bad that has happened to you can have been, subhanallah, from anyone besides Allah. If something bad happened to you, it was in the control of Allah. He allowed it to happen. Maybe something you did might have caused that to happen in the sense that Allah might have inflicted you with something as a result of what you did. It's possible. We know of punishment. Punishment is the truth. It comes in this world and it will also be in the hereafter. But we also know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us something. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them while they are seeking the forgiveness of Allah. If something negative happens to you, seek the forgiveness of Allah. And the condition of your heart will determine whether it was a punishment or not. If your heart is made distant from Allah because of something that happened to you, that is a punishment. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.